Hi there, welcome to the Schwoven's Nest. My name is Sandra. Today's video is all about clocks. We are going to take this $4 clock that I got at Dollarama and turn it into something fantastic for farmhouse decor. The battery pack and the parts on the back do pop off, but before I could do that, I needed to cut out the plastic so I could easily remove the hands on the front. That was something that didn't come off very easily. So I'm just using my miter shears and then I'm going to use my utility knife and I'm going to be very careful and break off that plastic and then slide out the hands and the whole system all at once. Before I get too involved in this DIY, I wanted to share with you that this video is in collaboration with my friend Nicole over at Shabby French Door. Nicole does a lot of DIYs, some thrifting, flea market hauls. If you haven't seen her channel yet, please go check it out. She asked if I would co-host with her and I was very happy to do so. There will also be a playlist link down in my description box, so make sure you go click on that and see what everyone else created for this DIY clock challenge. I'm going to use one of these MDF pieces. There were six in a pack for $4, so that was a huge steal. And my local Dollarama was carrying those along with some nine inch rounds. I'm also going to be using these wood garden stakes that I pick up at my Dollarama as well. It's $1.25 for 10 pieces. And I believe they're balsa wood, super easy to cut, but they're much thicker than the jumbo popsicle sticks. And I really love using them. They're so easy to cut and form into whatever shape you need. I'm marking off how I'm going to need to cut them to make a frame around the outside of the 10 by 10 board. And I'm just going to be using my miter shears to make those cuts. So here I've got my pieces cut for the border, two long pieces on the top and the bottom and then some shorter pieces on the sides. And I'm just going to use hot glue and glue them right onto the board. Once I've got the frame in place, then it's time to work on the angled pieces. So if you haven't figured it out already, I am making a barn door. And this is kind of tricky. I always mess this up, so it's a good thing I had a lot of extra pieces. What you need to do is make sure that your angled pieces are sitting on the bottom and the top, not the bottom and the side as I originally did with these cuts. So here's what I mean. I cut this side piece at the top and I don't want it there. I want it to be like at the bottom and then at the top, not at the bottom and the side. So at the top here where this final arrow is, is where you want that angle to be. So I'm going to need to start my cuts all over again, which is okay because it's a learning process. And you know what? That's just how things go when you're crafting. So here now I'm marking the bottom and at the top, not on the side. So this is finally going to turn out. And again, I'm just going to use my miter shears to get those cuts done. So I've actually turned the board now and you can see that it looks like this piece is going to be on the sides rather than the top and the bottom. But I've just turned it a quarter turn just so it's easier to glue these pieces in place. I've got the board turned right side again and now I'm going to be cutting smaller pieces. So it's going to have the angle on the bottom and then a cut to match up with that middle piece. I'm going to again hot glue it in place and then repeat the process for the other piece on the top left corner. I've done barn doors like these a couple of times and I still get confused each time I do it. So take your time, make sure you're cutting the right angles and if you mess up like I did a couple of times don't worry about it just start over and once you get it done a couple of times you'll be able to figure it out too. So now I've got to work on my little clock mechanism here and I need to very gently take off the clock hands because the clock needs to come from the back to the front and of course the hands need to be on the front. So with needle nose pliers and being very gentle you can just pull it off very easily and just set those to the side. 
I've just laid down a scrap piece of wood because now I'm going to take my drill and drill a hole from the top down so I have somewhere to place the clock mechanism in through the back. So I've got the hole drilled and it fits through really well. Unfortunately, it's just not tall enough. I've made the base and the extra pieces of wood a little too thick. So I've got to do some little finagling in the back to make it work. I'm tracing out the back of the clock and then I'm going to take my utility knife or my craft knife and just make a whole bunch of scoring lines all the way up and down and then crossways to make a grid and that's going to help me just pull off some of those pieces i'm also going to then use a screwdriver to try and pry some of those pieces off and then eventually i go to coarse grit sandpaper and sand it down quite a bit i get about an eighth of an inch of the mdf board off of the back which is just enough to let the clock sit a little bit more higher to the front I'm going to add some of these tumbling tower blocks to the back of the board and that's going to help elevate the board itself so it'll lay flat against the wall when it's hung because the clock mechanism sticks out from the board. I got these tumbling tower blocks from Walmart before Christmas. It's an actual full-size tumbling tower or Jenga game so these are extra large blocks and they work out really well. I used 12 of them all together. I'm going to use my linen white chalk paint from Rust-Oleum and a nice soft nylon brush and give the clock two coats. The front, the back, the sides, everything's going to be solid white. So here's everything dry and painted white. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. I just love it. So what I'm doing with my square from the Dollar Tree is just going across the center to mark where I want to put my numbers. So I'm going to put in 3, 6, 9, and 12. And I'm just going to mark with a little pencil dot so I know exactly where to put them. And then I'll repeat that for the 12 and the 6. At first, I thought I would use my Cricut Joy to put these numbers on, but then I thought, you know what? I can freehand these really easily. I'm only putting the four numbers on. So I'm taking my pencil and I'm just sketching out how I want them to look. And then I'm going to go over them with my Sharpie fine point pen. I'm going to continue using my Sharpie fine point pen and do some embellishing on these numbers. I'm going to thicken up the downstroke. So wherever your pen goes down, that will be a thick line. And when it comes up, it'll be a thinner line. Once I was completely done the clock, I ended up taking my CraftSmart paint pen and making the numbers a little bit thicker so they would stand out more. Of course, this is a farmhouse clock, so it has to be distressed. I really like the white, but it looks so much better when it's done being distressed. I'm taking a soft brush and some dark gray chalk paint and just bringing my brush from the edges into the center. And that's going to put some color right on the edge and then also bring a little bit of feathering right onto the top. I'm going to do this on all of the raised edges and in a moment you're going to see me turn my project. I always try to make it more convenient for myself instead of struggling and trying to get my paintbrush or my arm to turn a different way. I turn the project instead. So it just makes it a lot easier to get the same effect all the way around if your brush and your arm are in the same angle. So here you go. You can see that I just flipped it over and it's just going to make it so much easier for me to do the same type of strokes if the project is turned around. Using the same brush and still dabbing off some of the paint, I'm just going to distress all of the white. So I'm just going to go up and down and sideways and make sure that everything looks kind of uniform, but kind of not. I like to go pretty lightly at first so I can see how it's looking. And then it's always easier to add more paint than to take paint off. So keep that in mind when you're painting just go lightly at first and then you can deepen the color as you go. 
once I was done distressing the whole part of it, I decided that I wanted those edges to be a little bit deeper. So I'm going to go over them one more time. Then I did the same thing on all four edges, but I didn't worry about the back because it's going to be hanging on a wall and you won't see it. I'm going to use a generous amount of hot glue to glue the clock mechanism right onto the board. Now it's time to grab the clock hands and gently press them back into place. Make sure that they're going to move. That's one thing I was concerned about this, that maybe I didn't have enough elevation on the clock that the hands might not move, but it turned out pretty good. It also has this little black piece that gets popped into the very center and there are my hands. Good to go. The last thing my barn door clock needs is a hanger. I decided to take a piece of nautical rope. I tied a knot in each end, cut off the excess, and then hot glued it into place. I decided to replace the clock in my bathroom with this barn door clock, and I am in love. I hope you like it too. I'd like to thank Nicole at Shabby French Door for hosting with me. Please make sure you go check out her channel and the playlist. If you like this kind of content, I'd love for you to stick around a while. Hit that subscribe button. Those two black arrows will show you exactly where to click. See you in the next one.